United Women of Faith, and previously known as United Methodist Women. Brooke Ashley is in our traditional service this morning today to help us celebrate. Brooke is an ordained and current uh, or, she is ordained and currently serving at Gray United Methodist Church in Gray, Tennessee, which is part of the Johnson City area, because I know I had to look it up. The legacy of UWF began 150 years ago with a few bold women determined to change the world for the better with a focus on foreign missions. Through the years, UWF has, spent hundreds of, has sent hundreds of female missionary doctors, nurses, educators all over the world and supported countless U.S. and international projects advocating for justice for women and children. Today, we mark the beginning of a new era. We stand ready to not only continue our legacy, but forge courageous new paths. The needs are great, but our power and our faith are even greater. It is a deciding time to be a part of United Women in Faith. Driven by God's love, we are working to improve the lives of women and children. We show up, we take action, we get it done. To do that, we've added new programs, resources, membership options. We have taken a new name to reflect a more inclusive offering. The change to United Women in Faith includes a new logo, new improved programs, and nurturing current members and welcoming new women. United Women in Faith receives generous support, and we are committed to a financial stewardship that ensures every dollar makes the greatest difference and impact. United Women in Faith assists nearly 90 organizations across the U.S. and in 50 countries around the globe through grants, technical support, member involvement. Over the last several years, our church has supported local organizations such as Safe Harbor, Safe Place, Sevier County Food Ministry, Susanna House. We are currently, um, we have collected um, personal care items, gently used clothing for the homeless in our area, as well as Shades of Grace United Methodist Church in Kingsport. We have helped families at Christmas with food, toys, clothing, we made gift bags for our elderly shut-ins in our church during the COVID quarantine. We provided hot dog lunches for the children of Wesley House Community Center, as well as providing lunch here at our church for the senior citizens of Wesley House. We helped our youth with a fundraiser spaghetti lunch, remember that was last year, and donated food baskets to Zimbabwe. You have seen us selling shirts, aprons, and note cards for fundraiser, and we have a table set up today. Next month, United Women in Faith will be putting up an angel tree here in our uh, Great Hall. We will be collecting toys, gift cards, and many other items for the Isaiah 117 House. We are hoping you will be part of showing love to the children and youth of Isaiah House who need it the most. Ladies, wouldn't you like to be part of our group to show up, take action, and get it done for missions and for the glory of God? We encourage you to join us for our first Tuesday of each month in the Wesley classroom, which is right off here. If you are interested, please speak to me or any other lady from United Women in Faith. And thank you so much. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you. So just a couple um, announcements before we get started. Uh, first, there is a youth dance party tonight, uh, but it is a silent dance party, so the music will not be too loud uh, for any grown-ups that like happen to wander through uh, so come be a part of that please uh, if you're in the youth next Sunday is the biscuits and belonging which will be right in here during uh, the Sunday school hour it's an opportunity to um, reconnect maybe with people that happen to worship in a different service than you do or that maybe that you haven't seen in a little while so come please participate be a part of that uh, there'll be some more information about a youth mission trip that Daniel is going to share with you uh, all just a little bit later and then light the night is coming up on the 31st there's the sign up sheets are still in the back uh, the candy bucket is looking pretty good back there, but we could smush it down and still fit some more in there. So if you have opportunity to drop off some more candy uh, or sign up to volunteer, that would be uh, great. So uh, this is maybe the one of the best times of the year in our household because we love college football uh, so much. Um, and so this weekend was, um, we, and the two teams we cheer for, let me say, are Tennessee and Clemson. So it's been a pretty good run so far. Um, this season, but um, yesterday, Tennessee, if you watched that game, right, everything was easy, everything went their way, they just cruised, and Clemson was pretty much everything opposite of that, um, everything went wrong, 
uh, including like self-inflicted things. Um, but fortunately, Clemson came back and won it um, in the end. So the end result was the same. So that got me thinking about um, in our life, right, sometimes we're Tennessee and sometimes we're Clemson. Sometimes, no matter what season you're in in life, things are going your way. Um, everything seems to be easy. And then other times, uh, you can't get out of your own way. Everything seems difficult. Um, but the good news for us this morning is that if we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, the end result for all of us is the same. Right, so let's focus on that this morning as we're led in worship by uh, the Youth Praise Band. So this morning we have Jordan and Addison and Zach and JJ and Weston and then other people helping out. So please stand and worship this morning.
Isn't that awesome to have the youth up here leading us this morning? It's great. Thank you guys so much. These guys have grown so much over the last year and a half musically and also just being able to lead. And, you know, we got a lot of new faces up here, and it's just really great to see uh, them, them taking steps up. So really proud of you guys. Thank you all for, for helping out this morning. Um, before we uh, do the offering, uh, I wanted to share something uh, really quick. So, uh, you know, last year we went to Alaska on a mission trip, and it was an amazing experience. Um, here's the thing about Alaska, it's very expensive. So um, <laughs> the plan is um, for every three or four years to cycle back through to a big trip like Alaska. So that way every youth that goes through our ministry from the beginning will get a chance to go on one of those big trips. That's kind of the vision that we have for it. Um, and in the meantime, in the in-between years, we'll be doing more regional trips. And so uh, this next year, what we've decided to do is uh, to go to a, a place in Ohio called Echoing Hills. Um, somewhere, somebody that we met in Alaska, which was so great to us, was uh, Buddy, uh, Buddy Bush. And uh, yeah, he, he worked very closely with, our, with especially Alyssa's team in Alaska. 
and he's just this great man, and he was like, yeah, you know, I helped out at this camp um, um, for special needs, and, you know, I think uh, it could be really, your group would be amazing at it, and so we were thinking about it, and like, okay, whatever, so I call Buddy when we get back, and I'm like, so Buddy, like, what did you do there, like, like, you know, like, what did you do, so you can kind of give me an idea about, like, what, like, what the camp is, and he goes, oh, I was president and CEO for, like, 10 years, I was like, oh, okay, well, so, yeah, you would kind of know, I guess, what, what's going on, so, so um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play a, we're going to play a video here in just a second to kind of give you guys an idea of what it is and then um, give you some more information. So um, if you can go ahead and play that video. Summertime camp is a God explosion. A lot of them come year after year to see their friends that they just saw the previous year. They're just so excited because finally it's hot outside and they've been waiting for months to just be able to splash around in the pool and just have fun with their friends. Camp is worth coming for the summer just to see the campers enjoying themselves. You know, they're coming for fun, but they see all the other people around them working and helping other people, and they want to be a part of that. If someone had never been here before, like you had never been here, what would you tell them about camp that they would really enjoy and that they would want to do, and what would make them want to stay here? Camp cookout fun. We had a cookout one night with uh, burgers and stuff like that, so he really seemed to enjoy that. And he just, I mean, he put fun because, I mean, he had fun the whole week. I mean, you never stop having fun. Echoing Hills has just been a wonderful experience for my grandson, and we're so thankful that he's had the opportunity to come and to grow and experience this. You know, our volunteers are blown away by just how much they have been served, literally, and emotionally by our campers. It gives you such a sense of purpose to work here. I get to come work at camp, make friends with a camper, and I know at the end of the day that I've made an impact in their life. Uh, everybody thought that we looked alike and could be long lost brothers. And they said that it was like meant to be that we were here the same age. And, and we looked a lot alike, but I mean, I'm the better looking one, right? <laughs> At the end of each week, we have a moment where we take all of our campers up to Cross Hill. It's a moment when everybody's just quiet. It's a moment when you feel God come down. For people who've never done it before, who've never been, I just want to find a way to get them here because I've not seen one person leave camp without being changed. So. So, uh, so that's the plan for next year. We're going to be going July 9th through the 14th, or 8th through the 14th, sorry. Um, that's our plan for, for next year. And uh, next Sunday, um, we were going to be, after the youth service on uh, at night at 7 p.m., we're going to be having an interest meeting um, for people who may be interested in going. Uh, it's primarily for youth, but adults are welcome to come too. We have a, a cap of 30, so uh, youth will have kind of have first dibs, whoever want to go. But if other people in the church want to come as well, um, you know, there'll be, there should be some spots available as well. So if you want to come hear more about it, Buddy will actually be here, um, and he'll be there to answer all your questions so you have firsthand knowledge about it. So, um, so that's just where we feel God's leading us uh, this next year, so we're really excited about that. Um, so come next Sunday if you're interested in that at 7 uh, after our youth service, and we will uh, learn more about it. So we're excited about it. But uh, as we transition now to the time of our offering, um, um, you know, again, thank you so much for making trips like this possible, trips like Alaska possible. It's through your giving that we're able to do that. So, um, so I'm going to bless the offering, and we'll, uh, we'll uh, continue on with our service. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Thank you for um, allowing us to be your hands and feet, whether it's in Alaska, whether it's in Ohio, whether it's right here, God. Um, we, uh, we thank you for the gifts that have been given so that we are able to continue to do ministry, God, and I pray that the gifts that are given today will be be taken and they'll be multiplied and used to uh, for your kingdom advancing work. Uh, we thank you for this day. Be with the rest of the service and David as he comes to speak. We pray. Amen. A long time ago, there was a woman named Hannah. Hannah was very sad. Every year when Hannah went to the tabernacle, she cried because she did not have any children. <laughs> Once, while she was in the tabernacle, Hannah prayed to God. Dear God, 
you see that I'm so sad. If you answer my prayer and give me a son, then I'll give him back to you. He can be yours his whole life. While Hannah was praying, Eli the priest was watching her. He saw that she was sad. He thought something was wrong with her. Is something wrong with you? No, I'm praying because I'm very sad. My prayers haven't been answered yet. Oh, well, in that case, may God answer the prayer you've prayed to him. Hannah thanked Eli and went back home. And you know what? Later that year, Hannah had a baby boy. She named him Samuel. When Samuel was just about three years old, Hannah brought him to the tabernacle to live there and help the priest, Eli. Here he is, Eli. I promised I'd give this boy Samuel back to God if he answered my prayer. So here he is to help you in the tabernacle. Samuel lived in the tabernacle and God was with him. One night, Eli had gone to bed. Samuel was sleeping in the tabernacle. Suddenly, God called out to Samuel. Samuel. Samuel thought it was Eli calling him. Samuel got up and ran to Eli. Here I am. D did you call me? I didn't call you. Go, go back to bed. So Samuel went back to bed. Samuel. Here I am. D did you call me? I didn't call you. Go back to bed. Once again, Samuel went back to bed. You see, Samuel had never heard a message from the Lord like this, so he didn't know what was going on. So the Lord called a third time, and Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am. Y you called me? Hmm. I think that must be the Lord calling me. Go and lie down. If you hear the voice again, say, Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed. And the Lord called Samuel again. Samuel. Speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. Sure enough, it was the voice of the Lord. God gave Samuel a very important message that day. This was the first time Samuel had heard God's voice, but it wouldn't be the last. The Bible says that as Samuel grew up, God was with him and spoke to him again and again. Welcome to a new sermon series called, called God Speaks. I hope you enjoyed that highbrow entertainment that we had there for you in the transition video. You guys seem to dial really well into those videos when they're sort of on the kids' level. I think you're on the same level I'm on that way. So, But uh, their sleep was interrupted. Samuel and Eli had their sleep disturbed in that video. And it reminds me of a story I heard recently about a burglar breaking into a home at night, there was a man awakened in the middle of the night to find a burglar breaking into his home. He calls up the local police to ask for someone to help stop them. Help, someone is breaking into my home, he says to the dispatcher. We're sorry, but there are no cars available to help you right now. Please lock yourself in your room, and we will send an officer by in the morning to take a report, she informs him. The man hangs up the phone, and having an idea, he dials the police again. Never mind with that cop car, ma'am. I just got my AR-15 and shot them dead. Three minutes later, two cop cars, a SWAT team, and a helicopter all arrive on the scene and catch the burglar red-handed. Infuriated, the police chief storms up to the homeowner. He said, you said you shot them. The homeowner says back, and you said there weren't any officers available. So I guess that's one way that you can get them to respond in that situation. We don't want to be awakened in the middle of the night, do we? That sometimes is an irritating thing, but it's an exception if God is going... To speak to us. In this series, we're going to hear about how God speaks to different people in the Bible in a lot of different ways, and we're going to see how we can apply that to our lives today to see if we can understand and hear the voice of the living God. Today, we're talking about uh, some characters in the Bible. We're talking about Elkanah, and he has two wives, Hannah and Penaniah, and that's a little bit strange, and there are some strange stories in the Bible, if we're honest, we look at them and we go, I, I don't quite completely understand that. But uh, Penaniah was able to have children and Hannah was not. So therefore, she is constantly crying out. She's being teased also by the other wife because she's unable to bear children. So she has this fervent prayer at the tabernacle of God where Eli, the priest, observes her and she's praying so fervently. She's so disturbed 
that she's not even really saying anything. It's just like she's just all upset. And Eli thinks, this woman must be drunk. So he says, put down your wine and get out of here. Don't do that. And she says, oh, sir, I'm not, I'm not intoxicated. I'm just wanting this baby so badly. I want this prayer to be answered. And he says sort of nonchalantly, then okay, may God grant you what you're asking for. Have you ever prayed that hard? Have you ever been so upset and so full of grief and so full of anguish that you can't even get the words out? That you're just, ah, I don't even know what to say or how to say it. When you pray like that, you know that you're in pain. You know that you have issues where you're really trying to get a hold of God. You really want to hear from God. You want him to break through. Life can be brutal. Relationships, finances, emotions, health, addictions, whatever it may be. Children that run from God. Grandchildren that run from God. That can cause us to pray with that kind of emotion. So God grants her a son and she names him Samuel. And she dedicated him to serve God all the days of his life. And when he was old enough, she took him to the temple and places him under Eli's care to serve at the tabernacle. So that's where we're going to pick up the story today in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verses 1 through 5 in the New Living Translation. Samuel is at the temple serving God. Meanwhile, the boy Samuel served the Lord by assisting Eli. Now in those days, messages from the Lord were very rare and visions were quite uncommon. One night, Eli, who was almost blind by now, had gone to bed. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was sleeping in the tabernacle near the ark of God. Suddenly, the Lord called out, Samuel. Yes, Samuel replied, what is it? He got up and ran to Eli. Here I am, did you call me? I didn't call you, Eli replied. Go back to bed. So he did. The God of the universe calls out to Samuel, but Samuel didn't recognize the voice of God. He didn't understand that was God speaking to him. That had never happened to Samuel before, so therefore he's running to Eli, thinking Eli had called out to Samuel. And that makes me think about this question for you, is do you recognize the voice of of God, do you understand when that small, still voice speaks to your heart and into your mind? When you have that urging to give a gift, when you have that urging to help someone, when you have that urging to stop and to pray, to listen, when someone has a burden on their heart where you can be there to hopefully give them comfort, you can give them the peace and the joy that we have in our personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And not many of us hear the audible voice of God. God doesn't speak to us a lot of times in that way, but he always speaks to us through what? The word of God. If we will, as Christians, get into this instruction manual, all 66 books of it, whether you like them, whether you agree with them or disagree with them, if you will apply them to our lives, they will only help us. They will not harm us. And that's how you will always hear from God right here. Hopefully you hear from God through the men and the women of God who stand and preach and proclaim the gospel. Hopefully you can hear that small, still voice in our hearts where we know the difference between right and wrong, and hopefully we start to obey that small, still voice and do the things we know that are correct and step away from those things that we know are not good for us because the Bible tells us don't do that. Because the Holy Spirit instructs us you shouldn't do that. Stay away from that because that is not good for you. That's not healthy. That's not beneficial for you. So God was not speaking to the old seasoned priest who was in the tabernacle. He starts to speak to the young man, Samuel. Now, I know this is going to shock some of you, but sometimes in our older age, we get set in our ways and we're not able to maybe accept that counsel from God. Maybe we're not listening as well as we used to. Can I get an amen from any of the younger folks in here? Any, that would have been the time for the whole front row to go, amen, preacher. Those old people like you, the ancient folks in this world, you don't listen. Occasionally I will, but we do. We get set in our ways, don't we? And unfortunately, Eli was in the last days of his life, and he may have quit listening to the voice 
of God. He certainly quit obeying God. His sons, Hophni and Phinehas, were not living as they should be living. And unfortunately, Eli was allowing them to do that underneath the uh, protection of the tabernacle. They were abusing their positions. And Eli didn't discipline them. He didn't step in and stop them. And God was no longer wanting to speak to Eli because of his disobedience. But even though he wasn't the best priest and he wasn't walking the straight and narrow path, he was still a leader even though he may have been a wicked leader that God used because God was using him to do what? Take care of Samuel. That's encouraging to me because of the wickedness in our nation today. The wicked leaders that we see of both parties, I'm not picking on either one, but God can still use them to achieve his purpose in the United States of America and in this world. And that's comforting to me to know that he's still on the throne. He's still in control. He can use any kind of person, good or bad, to accomplish his purposes and what his plans are going to be. And your second point today is I want to challenge you. Be a Samuel and not an Eli in this life because Samuel, although he was young, was still serving God. He was doing what God had created him to do. He was being obedient. He was learning to listen to God. I love the fact that he was just a boy, yet he was serving God. Young people here today, you may just be youth. You may just be teenagers. You may be children. I don't care if you're 8 or 88. God can still use you, amen? He can use you for the plan and the purpose that you were created because each and every one of us have something that we can do. We saw it in our youth today, standing up here playing the guitar, playing the drums, playing the keys, and lifting up a wonderful, wonderful, glorious sound to God. Unlike me, if I started to sing up here, I would sound like an angry bag of cats. You don't want to hear that, amen? And you may have the ability to sing. You may have a beautiful voice. Well, come see Ashley. She would love to have you join the praise team. Now, if you sing like me, don't do that. Don't put her in that position. We don't want to make her have to tell you that truth and love. That No, I'm sorry. You, you, you can go usher. You can go greet. The tech team needs help. I mean, there are places that we can all serve God. If we can smile and we can shake hands, I'd love to see some other folks out here with me on Sunday morning just to say hi to people, to open the door. You know, I'm running back and forth opening the door. I don't care to do it. I love to do it. That's why I do it. But who else could help? We all have that ability, right, that we can walk. We, we walked in here. We can open a door. We can shake hands. We can smile at somebody. We can pass an offering plate. If you have a military police background, we have a security team here to make sure everything is safe while we worship on the campus. We would love to have you involved with that. Michael's not here today. Nobody's running the camera. It's on. I hope it's recording, but we don't have anybody on the camera because he's the only one, pretty much, that does it. Could you do that? It's, it's not difficult. He'll show you how. He'll train you how to do that. There's a lot of ways that we can jump in. Cooking, I, I could grill a little bit, but I'm not a really good cook, but I can come in here and I can help serve on Wednesday night or Thursday night, and many of us could do that. Miss Pat puts together wonderful food for us, and we feed the community on Thursday nights. Thanksgiving's coming up in a few weeks. We're going to do a good meal for them on Thursday night. If you've never been a part of that, you can come in, bring some turkeys to, to donate, and we can, we can feed the community. There's a lot of things we can do. We all have gifts, talents, and abilities. We're all a different part of the body, and I love the fact that Samuel, even as a young boy, is serving God. What's keeping you? from serving God. We'd love to have you help out to help us build this church. It's Jesus' church, but we're his hands and his feet. We can all do something regardless of our age. Let's see what happens here. 6 through 10, the verses say, Then the Lord called out again, Samuel. Again, Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am, did you call me? I didn't call you, my son, Eli said. Go back to bed. Samuel did not yet know the Lord because he had never had a message from the Lord before. So the Lord called a third time, and once more Samuel got up went to Eli. Here I am, did you call me? Then Eli finally realized it was the Lord who was calling the boy, and he said to Samuel, go and lie down again, and if someone calls again, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. 
So Samuel went back to bed, and the Lord came and called as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel replied, Speak, your servant is listening. And your third point today is, if you know the Lord, if you're a Christian, you should be listening to his voice as well. Maybe if you're a baby Christian, you just got saved recently, you have more of an excuse. But as Christians, if you've been a Christian for any amount of time at all, what are you doing to build that personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Because it's more than just saying, okay, I'm a Christian. We're acknowledging the fact that you called upon the name of the Lord to be saved, that you ask forgiveness of your sins, that you confessed with your mouth that Jesus is God, that you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. That's the beginning. That's the initial step that we do in order to have the Holy Spirit seal us for the day of redemption to be saved. But then we should be growing. Jesus said that you know the tree by the fruit that it produces. What fruit are you producing in your life? The peace, the love, the joy, the patience, the kindness, the gentleness, the goodness, the faithfulness, the self-control, that fruit of the Spirit should be growing in us. We should be producing something. We should be growing in this and learning this and renewing our minds, changing our mind, our hearts, and our actions, applying this to our lives, sharing it with other, other people, the lost, letting them know how much Jesus loves them. That's what we're called to do. I'm called to equip you to do that. I know you may think, well, you're the preacher. You're supposed to do that. We pay you to do that. Yes, but how many people can you reach that I can't reach this week? Because of who you have relationship with, who you interact with, where your past and your background intersect with them because God doesn't waste any of that. But we have to have a personal relationship. We have to grow with him. We have to intentionally grow with him. Where do you spend time with God? When do you grow in the word? You can't just put this under your pillow and put your head on it. It will not just by osmosis come in there. You've got to spend time in the Word of God. When do you dedicate time to do that? If you want to spend time and build a relationship with someone on this planet, you must spend time with them. You must interact with them. It's the same way with Jesus Christ. I know I beat this to death. I will beat it to death if God lets me preach another 30 years that the Word of God is vital. We've got to get in it. We've got to obey it. We've got to know it. And we've got to listen to God. We have to spend time with him. Are you listening to his voice? When? First thing in the morning. It's the best time for me. It might be a different time for you. But if I don't do that first thing in the morning, my day gets so busy and so crazy, and it gets away from me. And the next thing you know, I'm putting my head on the pillow at night, and it's too late. I'm zapped. I'm exhausted. 30 seconds later, I'm snoring. You've got to do it. You've got to do it. Make, make an appointment. I dare you. Put it on your calendar and start to spend 15 minutes, 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, whatever it may be. And then the more you do that, the more you'll grow in that, the more you'll yearn to do that, the longer those times will be. And then spending an hour, as Jesus said, it won't be hard to tarry for one hour with God. Christianity is more than a title. It's a relationship, and you've got to spend time with God to build that relationship. So ultimately, what did God want to tell Samuel? Let's see this in the next verses, 11 through 14. Then the Lord said to Samuel, I'm about to do a shocking thing in Israel. I'm going to carry out all my threats against Eli and his family from beginning to end. I've warned him that judgment is coming upon his family forever because his sons are blaspheming God and he hasn't disciplined them. So I vowed that there's the sins of Eli and his sons will never be forgiven by sacrifices or offerings. Ouch. Parents, grandparents, we've got to discipline our children. We've got to do it when they're young. We've got to continue to instill discipline, godly discipline in their lives. That's, that's one of the most vital things that we can do besides introducing them to Jesus Christ. We've got to build that discipline in their lives and make sure that they know the difference between right and wrong. If you, you bring a child up in the way that is right, when they get old, they will not depart from it. They may run for a season. They may turn their backs on God, but they will return. And your fourth point today is God means what he says, and he will do what he promises. If he says it in this Bible, he's going to do it. 
He cannot lie. He will not lie. God is a patient and merciful and just God, but he also will discipline us. He will allow us to be removed from the hedge of protection that things can happen in our lives. And he gives us many, many chances to repent and turn back to him. Unfortunately, Eli did not stop their behavior. He didn't listen to God. He didn't do what he knew he should do. Maybe whatever the reason, he let his kids do what they wanted to do, even though he knew it was not right. And we've got to set an example for our children because our children watch us as much as they listen to us, maybe even more. Do they watch us? Do they see you in prayer time? Do they see you reading the Word of God? Do they understand how vital that is to you? Are you bringing them to church on a consistent and regular basis, setting that example? Because I'm telling you, when they get older, they're going to probably want to run from going to church, especially if you didn't make it a priority when they were growing up. It's vital. It's, it's a huge responsibility for us to set the example for our kids. They need to see us. They need to see us. They need to know you got a prayer time. They need to know where that is. They need to see you reading the Bible. Not only reading the Bible, but obeying the Bible, living it out, producing the fruit that Jesus spoke about, living what the Bible teaches us to do. They see more than we think they do. They're dialed in on that. Let's see what happens next. I know that Samuel was going to have a meeting with Eli. He was not looking forward to sharing what God had relayed to him. Verses 15 through 18 says, Samuel stayed in bed until morning, then got up and opened the doors of the tabernacle as usual. He was afraid to tell Eli what the Lord had said to him. But Eli called out to him, Samuel, my son. Here I am, Samuel replied. What did the Lord say to you? Tell me everything and may God strike you and even kill you if you hide anything from me. So Samuel told Eli everything. He didn't hold anything back. It is the Lord's will, Eli replied. Let him do what he thinks best. Wow. That is cold. That is a cold, cold heart. After being told what was going to happen, that that judgment was going to come upon him and his sons, that no sacrifice was going to wipe away. Eli says, let God do what he thinks is best. Your fifth and next to last point is we should tell the world everything that God wants us to tell them without being afraid. That's not easy, is it? We have to tell the truth. We have to speak truth and love, though we can't come across with judgment. If you use this like a battering ram, if you use this to hit people in the head, they're not going to listen. But if you build a relationship with someone and you have that ability to be there for them in tough times, eventually you'll have an opportunity to speak truth and love. And hopefully they'll respond. The Holy Spirit will work with conviction upon those lives. It's not anything that we really do other than we're there. We're the messenger. But God can get through to them. It's amazing that uh, he just had a conversation, Samuel did, with the, the creator of the universe for the first time. And you notice it says he stayed in bed. He didn't sleep because he was, I'm sure, wide awake. He's thinking, wow, this is incredible. God has spoken to me. God thinks I'm so special that he came and he told me what he's going to do. And it's incredible what he said he's going to do to Eli and to his sons. And how am I going to deal with this? You notice he didn't go back to sleep. A young man, I can imagine, when he's thinking, what am I going to do? This is terrible news for Eli. The world doesn't like it when we speak the truth. When we, we say sin is sin and we say truth is truth, grace is grace, they think that we're intolerant. We, they think that we're hateful. They think all kinds of things and say all kinds of things about us, but that's okay. Do it anyway. And like I said, do it in love. Don't do it out of hatefulness. Do it with the right heart and the right motives. But it's our job to bring light into a lost and dying and dark world. Anybody got a lost and dying and dark world around you that you see? You see it every day, don't you? It's tough, but we can bring that peace to the lost don't let your heart get that cold and unfeeling like Eli, though. Man, that's tough. If he had repented, you think, what would have happened had Eli gotten in sackcloth and ashes and poured his heart out before God and got his sons in there and, and prayed for them and got them to pray and respond in the same manner? If, if he had repented, would God 
have relented. I believe he would have. But we'll find out the rest of the story. These are some sad verses. 1 Samuel 4, 13 through 18. They had gone to war. The Philistines had attacked. And Eli was waiting beside the road to hear the news of the battle. For his heart trembled for the safety of the ark of God. When the messenger arrived and told what had happened, an outcry resounded through the town. What is all the noise about, Eli asked. The messenger rushed over to Eli, who was 98 years old and blind. He said to Eli, I have just come from the battlefield. I was there this very day. What happened, my son, Eli demanded. Israel has been defeated by the Philistines. The messenger replied, the people have been slaughtered, and your two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, were also killed. And the ark of, the God, has, of, of God has been captured. When the messenger mentioned what had happened to the ark of God, Eli fell backwards from his seat beside the gate. He broke his neck and died, for he was old and overweight. So in just a few moments of time, he learned about his sons being killed in the battle, the Ark of the Covenant being taken from Israel, and then he fell back, broke his neck. And what God had said to Samuel came to pass. Then what happened with Samuel? We look back at 1 Samuel 3, verses 19 through 21, our closing verses. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him, and everything Samuel said proved to be reliable. And all Israel from Dan in the north to Beersheba in the south knew that Samuel was confirmed as a prophet of the Lord. The Lord continued to appear at Shiloh and gave messages to Samuel there at the tabernacle. God replaced Eli. He replaced him with Samuel because Samuel was willing to listen. Samuel was willing to obey, and then everyone knew the Lord was with Samuel. And that's your sixth point today. The Lord was with Samuel and confirmed him as his prophet. I know there aren't many prophets probably here in the room today, but can people say what they said about Samuel, that the Lord is with you? If we came to your workplace this week and we interviewed people that are around you, that work with you or work for you, could they say that, yes, the Lord is with this person? Could they say that at school? Could they say, yes, these people worship Jesus Christ. Could they say that about you in any relationship? If your neighbors, if we went and asked and knocked on your neighbor's doors, could they say, yes, the Lord is with this family. We should be a witness. We should be reaching others for Jesus Christ. I'm going to ask every head to be bowed and every eye to be closed this morning. Are you here today and maybe you have that cold heart? Maybe you're like Eli and you you know you're living where you shouldn't be living. You're doing the things that you should not be doing according to the Holy Spirit inside of you and the Word of God. Is this a day that you need to repent, that you need to turn back? In a few moments, we're going to have that opportunity. We're going to have our closing song. and We'll stand and we'll worship God. I'll be at the front. I'd love to pray with you. I'd love to encourage you. Are you listening for God to speak? Do you recognize that still small voice in your heart and your mind? Would you say, Pastor David, I'm truly not spending time in the Word. I'm not making an appointment with God on a daily basis. I need to do that. Maybe something I said about volunteering. Maybe you, you want to just tell me that I'll see you next week out here at 1030 and we'll shake hands and we'll greet people and we'll smile and we'll open the door for them when they come in. Maybe you want to talk to David about being an usher passing some offering plates or the tech team with helping to run a computer or monitor or even videoing we can all do something to serve this kingdom we can feed we can serve people in the kitchen with miss pat doesn't matter what our age is eight or 108 we can do it you still have breath in your lungs you have a heartbeat what else can you do that's better to do with your time anyway than to serve jesus christ Father God, I just thank you for this day. I thank you for this opportunity to share what you've given me, God, to bring this uh, series on God Speaks. And God, I pray that we would all listen for your voice, that we would all be in your word, that we would all grow in our personal relationship with you, Jesus. If there's one under the sound of my voice that's not made that decision for you, Jesus, I pray that your Holy Spirit would knock on the door of their heart, that right now they would agree that they're going to come in just a moment, they're going to step out, walk the aisle, 
and make you Lord and Savior of their life. If there's anyone here that needs prayer for any reason, physically, relationally, emotionally, spiritually, or financially, God, I pray that your spirit would move them as well, that they would step out in faith, that I could agree with them in prayer. Father God, be with us. Holy Spirit, have your way in this house today. We thank you for all that you are. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen, amen. Let's stand. Let's worship God. If you need prayer, come. Praise God. Join me as we pray. 
Father God, I just thank you for this opportunity today. I thank you that we can come in freedom, that we can worship you, that we have the health and the ability to do so, God. I pray that you would let us be your hands and feet of Jesus Christ throughout this week, that we would go and share truth and love. God, if we'll love others, we'll have an opportunity to share truth, but we need to love them and let them know that you love them. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. If you need prayer, I'll be here till the last person. God bless you. You're dismissed.